kids on the move. You know what? It's the first week of June, which means school's almost done for the year and summer is on the way. Yes. And you know what else is exciting? What we're going to talk about in Kids on the Move today, we've got a Bible story that you might have heard if you were listening in church with the adults last week, and we're going to talk about the most famous verse in the whole Bible, and of course we're going to talk about the best news the whole world has ever seen, yes! And before we get going with all of that, I wanted to talk to you for a little bit about superheroes. I love superheroes. I read comic books with my dad a lot when I was little, and my first ever Halloween costume, I was Batgirl, and I got in a fight with a boy at McDonald's because I wore my costume to McDonald's because I was that kind of kid. And we got in a fight because he told me I couldn't be Batman because I was a girl, but obviously I was Batgirl. Anyway, who's your favorite superhero? Go ahead and yell it out. Those are all some great answers, and I want you to meet this other superhero I just ran into recently. It's pretty crazy. You ready? Who is this? Is this Pastor America? Captain Ben? I'm not really sure, but, you know, most superheroes get their confidence. You know, they know something to be true because they are confident in their ability to save the day with their superpowers, their super strength, or in Captain America's case, his super serum that makes him strong. But as Christians, we have our confidence in something outside of us because superheroes' powers can fail, like how kryptonite is Superman's weakness, but our confidence and our strength comes from something that can never fail. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But first, I'll pray for us as we get going this morning. Dear God, thank you so much for all these kids who are joining today. I ask that you teach them how much you love them and help them understand that their identity comes from you and not from anything the world says about them. And help us to all live more like your son Jesus as we share the good news of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! What's up, everybody? It's me, Graham. How do you like my smolder? I'm smoldering because in my line of work, you've got to have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. I don't know how you see yourself, but I see myself as a performer. You should hear me sing. I sing everywhere, in the shower, in my car, alone in my room, everywhere, except in front of other people. That's where I draw the line. I when I'm alone, I'm like the most confident singer on the planet. But when other people are involved, I freeze up. And it's not just when I'm singing, it's when I'm playing an instrument. Or when I'm playing baseball. I got it. I got it. You get it. Or anytime someone asks me a question and I'm not sure of the answer. Why is the sky blue? Oh, uh, well, there's a very, very good reason. The, uh, the p p part particles in the, um, uh, uh, the app. Basically, anytime people are watching, I lose my confidence. I start to doubt myself. I forget to see myself the way God sees me. If that's something that happens to you, you're gonna wanna stick around for today's story. It should be pretty cool. I can't see anything in these. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, we know we belong here because of your love for us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go.
us we know we've been longing Because of your love for us that goes on and on forever Jesus we know you are with us wherever we go You're there we'll always be together So sing along with me for all the joy he brings It's going down Get in the mix We're not stopping Today's bottom line is, you can be confident because God loves you. Have you ever performed in a talent show? Raise your hand. Have you ever performed here at church? I do not have any musical abilities or talents of any kind, so I would never stand up in front of people and perform anything. But I'll tell you a little secret. I really don't like standing up in front of people and talking either, but sometimes I have to. It's not my favorite, but I'll do it. I know that some of you do Bible quizzing here at church. When it's time to pick your answer, are you always confident in the answer that you picked? Well, today we're going to talk about why we can always be confident. Not in how we perform, or because we have talents, or because we have all the answers, but because of who we are and whose we are. We're going to be learning about seeing ourselves the way God sees us. So I'll meet you back here after the Bible story. But now let's check in with Miss Holly and find out our Bible verse for the month of June. Hi everyone, time for our memory verse. And since it's a new month, it means it's time for a new Bible verse to learn. And I think you might like this one. Do you know why? Because it's a lot shorter than all the other ones we've learned lately. It's pretty small, so it'll be easier to memorize. So let's read this month's Bible verse together. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27:13. Did you catch that? One of our theme words for this month was in the verse, confidence. We've been talking about confidence, and in this verse it says, I will remain confident that I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Do you know what that means? Of course we'll see the goodness of the Lord someday when we go to heaven, but we can also see God's goodness right now here on earth. I see God's goodness when I go out in nature and see how beautiful it is, or I can see God's goodness when I receive blessings that I don't deserve, or if I see someone treating another person like Jesus would. Those are all examples of God's goodness in the world. Now, in order to learn this new quick short verse, we're going to use repetition, saying it over and over again, and we'll learn it pretty quickly that way. So just to review what the verse is one time, we'll read it all together once more, and it says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27:13. All right, now we're going to come up with all kinds of weird ways to say this verse together. Uh, and of course, we can't go without saying it as loud as we can. I know this one's your favorite. Ready, set, go. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Whew, very loud. 
Okay, how about this one's gonna sound pretty silly. Let's all hold our tongues and try to say the words. It's gonna come across very garbled. Here we go. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Did you understand that at all? Good thing you've got it in your brain now because you probably couldn't understand what I was saying. Uh, next, we'll say it as fast as we can. Ready, set, go. I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Woo! I feel pretty good about that one. I could read the, you know, the really fast words at the end of a commercial on TV pretty quick. Uh, and then for our last one, let's do it where we all do a different kind of weird voice. Uh, you could kind of growl like you're a monster or do a high squeaky voice or I'm going to do a stitch voice because I think I'm pretty good at sounding like stitch from Lulo and stitch. Pick whatever you think you're the best at. It'll just be goofy and fun. All right, ready? I will remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. <laughs> you guys all sound so funny. I'm sure I probably sound pretty weird for you out there too. But the last thing to do with this verse, instead of just repeating it, is I'm going to ask you a few questions like we do in Bible quizzing. I hope someday when you all graduate elementary school, you'll go from children's quizzing to do teen Bible quizzing, which is so fun. And a way we can learn verses in quizzing is we make questions and answers using the verse. So I'll start with some short answers and they'll get longer. So the first question based on this verse is, where will I see the goodness of the Lord? In the land of the living. Next question, what will I see? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then here's the last question that has most of the verse in it. What do I remain confident in? That I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And what is the reference? Psalm 27, 13. Great job, everyone. I hope you can hold on to that one in your brain. Keep saying it in your silly voices. And we'll see how you well you do with it next week. Goodbye. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. As Jesus began to travel and teach and perform miracles, people started asking, Who is this man? One of these people was a man named Nicodemus. He had been born a Jew. Well, yes, we are God's chosen people. Not only that, but Nicodemus was also a Pharisee, an important religious leader, and he was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish high court. After careful consideration, I find that you have disobeyed God's law. And to top it off, Nicodemus was one of the leading teachers of Old Testament scriptures. You must never work on the Sabbath. Uh, would you like to hear me recite the other 612 laws? So it seemed like if anybody had a direct path to heaven, it was Nicodemus. But even though he tried his best to follow God's rules, he might have sensed something missing as he watched Jesus teach, as he heard about the amazing thing this young rabbi was doing. The other Pharisees, though, did not approve of Jesus. They say he turned jars of water into wine at some backwards wedding. Ugh, peculiar. Uh, I also heard he makes sick people well, just like that. That's less disturbing than driving all the money changers and sellers out of the temple with a whip. Did you hear about that? Nicodemus didn't know what to think. All of these signs. Jesus couldn't do things like this if he weren't from God, right? Nicodemus was so curious he decided to talk to Jesus himself, but he didn't want the other religious leaders to know what he was doing, so he snuck out in the middle of the night to find Jesus. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Listen closely to what I say. No one can see the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. B born again? How can someone be born another time when they're already old? 
Nicodemus was trying to imagine what on earth Jesus was trying to say. I mean, Nicodemus had already been born once as a Jew. Didn't that mean he would get into heaven? Surely you can't mean someone would have to go back inside their mother. Pay attention. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. <sighs> Nicodemus's mind raced. Jesus was saying that simply being a Jew wasn't enough, that following the rules couldn't get him to heaven. There was a new way. How can this be? You are Israel's teacher. Don't you understand these things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. He is the Son of Man. Everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Years later, Jesus' friend John helped to make it clear as he wrote down this amazing conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Okay, there is so much great stuff in this one short verse. I think we better break it down. Let's start right here with God loved. God made us. He loves us more deeply than we can ever imagine. But just like Adam and Eve in the very beginning, each one of us has broken our relationship with God. Every time we lie or disobey a parent or do something we know is wrong, that's called sin and sin hurts our relationship with God. But God had a plan to make things right. That's why God gave. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God gave the most incredible gift ever, his own son, Jesus. Jesus lived on earth as a human being, but he lived perfectly. He never sinned, never broke a single one of God's rules. And then he gave up his own life by dying on a cross to rescue us. When Jesus died, he paid the price for our sins, sins that we could never pay for on our own. And because of Jesus, our broken relationship with God is healed. We can be close to him like sons and daughters. Anyone can have that relationship with God. Whoever believes. Anybody can believe in Jesus. You, your mom, your dad, your best friend, the new kid at school, the guy who feeds pigeons at the park. Anybody can believe in Jesus because Jesus is a real person. He came to earth about 2,000 years ago. People talked with him and followed him. And like Nicodemus, they watched Jesus do amazing things from making blind people see to feeding thousands of people from one tiny little lunch. And people saw him nailed to a cross until he died. But here's the amazing part. Jesus came back to life and hundreds of people saw that too. Jesus is alive right now. He's living with God in heaven. And we can live with God forever too. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. That's the key. You can have a relationship with God, not just now, but for always. When you believe in Jesus and that he died to pay a price for your sins that you could never pay, God gives life forever with him. And just like Nicodemus discovered, you can't earn this forever life by doing all good things or following all the rules. It's a gift from the creator of the universe who loves you no matter what. Now, remember Jesus' friend John who wrote all this down? He adds another thought. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. He sent his son to save the world through him. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, when you follow Jesus and put your trust in him, you can have confidence in knowing that you're part of this amazing, never-ending story that God is telling. And you'll be able to share that story yourself as you grow in loving God and loving others. Here's what I know. There are times in our lives when we lose confidence. Maybe it's because we're afraid we'll mess up. Or maybe we don't think we're good enough or strong enough or smart enough. But here's another thing I know. If you're a good singer, or if you're not, if you can catch a baseball, or if you can't, if you know the answers to all the questions, 
or if you don't, God loves you. I don't know how you see yourself, but when God sees you, he sees someone he created, someone who is loved, someone who matters. How much does God love you? It's like what John wrote. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. God loved you so much that he gave his son Jesus. And whoever believes in Jesus will have a relationship with God forever. That's where my confidence comes from. No matter what I'm going through, I know that God loves me. And now you know too. That's the one thing to remember today. You can be confident because God loves you. So maybe now I can have the confidence to perform in front of other people. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the street. Yep, God still loves me. And that's pretty cool. I'll see you next time. I love that story. That is the best story in the whole Bible. That's what it's all about. Now, I want you to think for a minute about the one thing that you like most about yourself. Maybe it's something you can do, like a talent or a skill, or maybe it's about your personality or your character. So think for a minute about that one thing. Go ahead and share that with someone in your family, at home, or someone sitting next to you. The thing I like most about myself is my patience. Most of the time, I'm a very patient person. God made us all unique and gifted us with different personalities and different strengths. We are his children. Imagine how much God loves you and what he thinks about you. Now, I have two children, and I think they are the most entertaining and adorable things ever. But they are definitely not perfect. And Ella doesn't always listen the first time. But they're mine, and I love them so, so much. God is the creator of the universe. He made each one of us, and we are his children. He loves my kids more than I ever can, and he loves you more than your parents ever could. That's where our confidence should come from. I hope this week you remember how much God loves you, and you live in that confidence. Now let's pray together to close our time today. Father God, thank you so much for each one that's here today. I thank you for your word that has taught us how much you love us, that you sent your son, your one and only son, to die on the cross to save us so we could have a relationship with you. Thank you so much for your unending love. Help us to live in the confidence that you give us. I pray a blessing on each one this week. In your name, amen. Bye, guys. Have a great week. Thank you.